Hello. The objective of this video is to learn about number lines and how to show addition and subtraction of integers on a number line. Now, number lines are traditionally horizontal. Now, horizontal, we have trouble remembering that word. Think about looking across the horizon. That would be horizontal. But they can come in vertical form, too. Think about a thermometer. Thermometer is a vertical number line. And if you were to combine a vertical number line with a horizontal number line, you would get what is known as a coordinate plane. Now, number lines traditionally have these little tick marks on them, and the spacing is evenly done, and that spacing is called an interval. The space here is an interval, which means that this interval has some meaning here. There could be a value of 1, could be a value of 10, could be a value of a tenth, a hundredth, a fraction of something, but there will be an even number across here. So if we are going by 1's, traditionally, if it's not labeled, we would start off with a 0, and you say you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so even if it wasn't labeled, you'd understood that each of the intervals here is 1. They could have been 10, they could have been 5, but when there's no labeling, it's understood you have a distance of 1. That interval is 1. Well, let's take a look. Here's a blank number line, no labeling on here. You may have originally, when you first learned about number lines, you set it up with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on down the line. Well, you don't need to start at zero anymore because we're from talking about negatives as well as positives. So we may end up going further this way, which means you don't need to start with zero. Does zero need to be in the middle? You may have been told in elementary school that you have to include zero on every number line. Well, in certain areas when you're dealing with numbers, yes, you'd want to have zero there. But our problems are going to range in values up to thousands. They're going to go down to tenths, hundredths. They're going to get really small numbers, really big numbers. It's not always practical to have the zero on your number line. So you don't always need it. What you do always need is nice, evenly spaced tick marks here. You don't want to have one tick mark here, and then one here, and then one here, and then one there. That's not a good number line to have marks like that. You do want to have arrowheads on both ends because the number line does continue in both directions. In the past, you may have been told, well, you're graphing the number 3 on the number line. Here's 4, 5, 6, 2, 1, 0. If you're graphing the number 3 on the number line, you should put a dot right here on the number line itself. And there are some people that will still say you really need to put it on the number line itself. My problem with that is a lot of students write the number so, the dot so small I can't tell where it is. So I say you should put the dot just above the tick mark for that line. So if you're putting number three on the number line, put the, the mark there. And we're going to learn more about inequalities on a number line and other things on a number line, but right now in this video we're going to be talking about adding and subtracting, and we'll talk more about what, how you're going to use this number line to show that. So let's move on to that example of adding or subtracting. Here we have a simple addition problem, 3 plus 2. We know that 3 plus 2 is 5, but if you're asked to model it on a number line, well, you've got to put numbers on the number line, and the minimum if you were given a blank line with no intervals, I require a minimum of two lines to the right, two lines to the left, and they need to be labeled appropriately. In this case, it's a lot more than two lines, but we'll go with that. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. Why did I start with a three here? The problem starts with a 3, and when you're talking about representing an addition problem or subtraction problem on a number line, that first number is your starting point. Now you're not going to start with an actual point, you're not going to put a dot there. Since we're talking about representing and adding and subtracting, that point is just a starting point. 
So we're going to put a line, a vertical line, right above the 3 to show that that's our starting point. The next number is not where we're going, but it tells us how far we're going and in what direction we're going. Adding 2. Adding is going to the right. How far we're going? 2 to the right. So I would go 1, 2, I put the arrowhead here, I'd end up at 5. Now our textbook shows an arrowhead. I might have put another line here to show that it does go here but ends there. Either way is fine, whether you have the arrow, or you have to have the arrowhead, but whether you have the line there or not, that's up to you. But this is showing the problem of 3 plus 2 on the number line. 3 is the starting point, adding 2, the result was 5. So you would write equals 5. I'm not going to write equals 5 here though because I want to show what happens if we were to extend this to include something like plus a negative 7. So this is represented by this here, but now if we add another thing, we're adding negative 7 on here, that's two, up, two steps in the process. This would be the first step. The second step, we would be starting at this point, the 5, where we left off from here. This is telling me that we're adding a negative. Well, now, adding is going to the right, but since we're adding a negative, it's actually going to go to the left, because adding the negative is the same as subtracting the positive. So we go to the left, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And end it like that. This, the two lines together, represents this problem on a number line. Okay? So let's try another one. If I can get the tape off. There we go. All right, let's say we have negative 2 minus a negative 3 minus 4. All right, where do we start? Started at negative 2. So we draw a vertical line over the negative 2. Minus a minus. Well, we should know minus a minus. You do the keep it, you keep it, change it, change it. This is going to become a plus 3. So I'm actually going to go to the right 3. 1, 2, 3, that's where I end up after the first step. Minus 4, again, now I'm going to start here, it's where I left off, start there. Minus 4, I'm going to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now you may have in the past been told about jumps, and I'll even show jumps like that. That's the work behind the answer, this is the way to show it. Jumps are not always an effective way of showing your addition and subtraction. It doesn't really do it. You have to have arrowheads in each way, and it gets very messy. This allows you to stack one on top of the other and show very neatly what the process is. All right, so. In order to learn math, you have to do math. So take a moment, pause the video, and try these two problems now. Welcome back. Starting at negative 4, draw a line. Subtracting 1 means I'm going to the left, 1. Then I would need to add 7 from this starting point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is how I would represent the problem on the number line. What's the solution? 2. That's where I ended there. All right, here I start at 3. So I do the vertical line there. Minus 5, I'm going to the left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I'm subtracting a negative 4. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding the positive. So we are going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we end up here at 2. So our solution here is 2.
Now, you could also be asked to work backwards. You could be given a number line representation like this and have to write the expression that is represented here. Expression or even the equation. Well, how do you figure out where the starting point was? Well, looking at these numbers, well, the first thing I see is I, this is a beginning, this is an end. This is a beginning, this is an end. This must be the very beginning, though, because you'll see as I go from here to here, I connect up with this one, which lets me know that I'm going to continue that way for the next step. If I started here and ended here, I wouldn't have any connection for the next step. It would only include that one step. So starting here, going there. So my starting point is the 3. Remember, the next number tells us how far we're going in which direction. So this next number, I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To the left is subtraction, so I subtracted 5. And then I went to the right, which is addition. I went to the right 1, 2, 3, which means I'm adding 3. And my result, if I was asked for the equation as opposed to an expression, this would be the expression. The equation includes the equal sign and the solution of 1. So you may have to go backwards like that. Give it a try with these next problems on the board here. Work. Give me the expression. But why don't you give me the equation for these two? Number lines. Welcome back. This one, we've got a starting point of 12. They're going to the left, so that's one, that's subtraction. One, two, three, four, subtracting four. And then we are adding because we're going to the right, so we add one, two, three. So we're adding three, and we ended up at 11. So this represents the equation of 12 minus 4 plus 3 equals 11. This one started, well, look at lines that aren't numbered. What do we do? Well, this says 0, that says 2. This is right in the middle of them. So this must be halfway between, halfway between 0 and 1, 2 is a 1. So although it's not written there, I can tell that this line must be at, it must be the number 1. So my expression is going to begin with a 1. Going to the right means I'm adding. I'm adding 1, 2, 3. The change there is a change of 3, so I'm adding 3. And then I would subtract, because I'm going to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 which would leave me at, well, again, I'm between two numbers here, between negative 4 and negative 6, that would give me a negative 5. And that's the equation represented by that number line. Hopefully this has been helpful. See you next time.